In sweet October, SpaceX launched Starship and caught the booster for the first time in history. This leaves the whole world in awe with its engineering feat that has never been seen before. However, that's not the end because, under the domino effect, Flight 5's success led directly to a game-changing contract. This big new deal helps SpaceX reverse its position at the negotiating table in its fight against bureaucracy and bad politics. Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. October must be the best month for SpaceX. They have made the hairs on our necks stand up with the most incredible engineering feat ever seen in global space exploration. For the first time, a 23-story skyscraper was caught on two tiny little hooks by metal chopsticks. It's truly a great victory, paying off for the company's efforts to build a reusable vehicle for use on the Moon and Mars. Of course, looking at things from a broader perspective, this victory is not only about Mechazilla successfully catching the Super Heavy rocket. The entire launch and return were available to be seen throughout the world via a reliable high-speed internet owned by the company, Starlink. This satellite constellation system offers unlimited high-speed data through an array of small satellites that deliver up to 150 megabits per second of internet speed. So far, there are 6,426 Starlink satellites in orbit, of which 6,371 are working. It connects more than 4 million people with high-speed internet across more than 100 countries, territories, and many other markets. Through the fifth flight of Starship, Starlink once again proves its top quality by transmitting the entire perspective of the flight to viewers around the world contributing to a big media effect. This not only helps the company to attract more fans, but also enhances its position and reputation for the government. It comes in handy in a context where SpaceX is facing political conflicts against attackers who are mostly Democrats. For example, we know that on October 15th, SpaceX filed a lawsuit against the California Coastal Commission after the commission voted on October 10th to block the rocket company from conducting further launches on the state's central coast. The key point here is the reaction of the U.S. US Space Force, SpaceX's main customer in this location. Prior to Starship's launch, they were in favor of California officials by agreeing to all Commission's demands. But the amazing part is that five days after the fifth test flight, they seemed to change their mind by awarding SpaceX a huge contract worth $733.5 million for national security space missions. These launches are to give a heads up when bad guys attack us by launching missiles. Worth noting that all of these national security launches would take place from Vandenberg, where the California Coastal Commission rejected SpaceX's rocket launch expansion. With such support, we can absolutely believe that SpaceX's odds of winning this lawsuit are very high. Who knows? The importance of national security launches is off the table. So between the national missions and political battle, which one should be prioritized? Simultaneously, SpaceX has also another guarantee for its winning, which is the support of California Governor Gavin Newsom. Despite the conflict in the past between this Democrat man and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, so far it's unclear what actually happened behind the scenes. We just know that no matter who will be the next U.S. president, the Pentagon really needs SpaceX. The company's Starship project, although has not come online, catches the military's eyes with many promising functions. As the largest and most powerful rocket ever built, Starship can carry up to 150 tons of payload to LEO, allowing it to transport sizable military equipment, such as tanks and helicopters, and humanitarian supplies during disaster relief operations. It's equivalent to the capacity of the largest military plane in the world, Antonov An-124 Ruslan developed by the Ukrainian company Antonov in the 1980s. However, with approximately 800 kilometers per hour of speed, Antonov is still much slower than Starship with a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour. Such superfast speed helps the rocket to reach any destination on Earth in under an hour, with most international flights completed in a mind-boggling 30 minutes, which is a vision that SpaceX confidently foresees. Confidently realizing that potential, in February, the Pentagon spoke to the company about procuring its own fleet of Starship rockets for sensitive missions. At present, the U.S. government relies on non-military contractors to launch payloads for various operations, including satellite launches, and does not have its own space launch vehicles, at least any that are disclosed, which it could deploy in a potential contingency scenario. SpaceX is already working with the Air Force and Space Force on the rocket cargo program, which seeks to rapidly deliver cargo and possibly 
possible personnel anywhere on Earth that can support a landing. Purchasing the whole Starship will be very useful in some cases where there needs to be a government-owned, government-operated launch vehicle, and that transfer can happen on the fly. With the stunning success of Starship's October 13th test flight, the Space Force has more evidence to believe what SpaceX promises them. Of course, to make that happen, what does the Starship development phase need? First and foremost, it's money, a lot of money, up to multi-billion dollars. And one of the best ways is through the lucrative military contracts launched by SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. You know, launch prices for NASA and military payloads run higher than SpaceX's base commercial price. Government satellites often require special handling, resulting in extra fees in some terms like engineering insight, unique cleanliness specifications, and in some cases schedule priority over other commercial missions. The area where Falcon Heavy really shines is heavy satellites meant for distant orbits and mostly includes military launches. In early 2023, Falcon Heavy was warmed up with the USSF-67 mission in mid-January. Here, a new center core in an expendable configuration was applied, while the two reused side boosters landed at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Next in May, they moved on to the Viasat-3 launch. The next three included Jupiter-3, Psyche, and Boeing's X-37B space plane. In addition to the military, the arrival of the rocket helped reverse the upward trend in NASA launch prices. In 2020, NASA awarded a $117 million launch contract to SpaceX for a Falcon Heavy launch of Psyche. One year later, we witnessed a $178 million contract being awarded by NASA for Falcon Heavy to launch Europa Clipper. Later the same year, there was a trade valued at $152 million between the Space Agency and SpaceX to launch a large new NOAA weather satellite. SpaceX beats Yuli to win $730 million to launch at least nine national security missions, once again demonstrating the Falcon Heavy's immense capabilities over its competitors. The Falcon Heavy is one of the most powerful operational rockets capable of lifting large payloads into various orbits. Falcon Heavy has the second highest payload capacity of any currently operational launch vehicle behind NASA's Space Launch System and the fourth highest capacity of any rocket to reach orbit, trailing behind the SLS, Energia, and the Saturn V. This capability is crucial for military missions that often require deploying multiple satellites or large spacecraft simultaneously. For example, the USS F-67 mission successfully launched a military communication satellite along with five smaller payloads, demonstrating its capacity to handle complex missions. With a base launch cost of just $90 million, Falcon Heavy can launch that cargo for just a fraction of the price. United Launch Alliance charges for the service. Atlas V starts at $109 million, whereas the company's other type of rocket, the Delta IV Heavy, costs upwards of $350 million a launch, limiting its use to government customers. Even ULA's low-cost Vulcan Centaur has a price tag of around $100 or $200 million. The low cost stems from the reusability of first-stage boosters, which can return to Earth and be refurbished for future launches. This reusability not only reduces costs, but also increases the frequency of available launches, allowing for rapid deployment of military assets as needed. Last but not least, the Falcon Heavy incorporates advanced technology that can support various military applications, including experimental missions like those conducted by the X-37B space plane. These missions often often involve testing new technologies and conducting research that contributes to national defense capabilities. In the satellite field, SpaceX also demonstrates its big contribution to security missions by providing and funding Starlink services to Ukraine largely on its own. It's where Starlink demonstrated it could operate in a combat zone and prove to be more resilient than the U.S. military would have expected from a commercial system. However, for Elon Musk, Starlink needs to be a civilian network, not a participant in combat. That's where a military version of its Starlink satellites called Starshield comes in. Starshield is also capitalizing on SpaceX's participation in the U.S. Space Force's Space Development Agency's missile tracking and missile detection constellation, where it partnered with Lidos to develop four classified infrared sensor satellites scheduled to launch before the end of the year. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.